Let's take a look at the push button. It's one of the simplest widgets out there, but it's got a lot of properties we really need to understand. So we're going to call this cute widgets for beginners, 3-1, next, next. Of course, going to set this to cue dialog. Don't worry, we are going to cover cue main window. And cue widget is basically the foundation of everything that we're already talking about here. Okay, first things first, we need to build up our actual interface. Let's just through the magic of copy and paste, throw some buttons out here. And let's go ahead and fill these out. So we're going to say checkable. Let's call this BTN auto repeat. In case you're wondering what's going on here, we're just simply building out this interface. We're going to set the properties on each one of these, and then these are going to be verification buttons. So, for example, this button's going to be checkable. This one's going to auto repeat. We're going to go into each one of these. This one's going to be the default button. And this is going to simply quit the app. We call this BTN toggle auto repeat. And let's call this one BTN toggle default. All right. Go ahead and put those into a grid and let's drop that down there. Beautiful little interface here. All right, so first things first, we need to actually set these attributes. We can do it via code or we can do it using the property editor. For this specific video, we're going to do it the property editor, but you'll see me do it via code in the future as well. So checkable. Let's just search for checkable here. Sure enough, it's under Q abstract button. I want to really dive into this. So I'm going to clear that filter. You can see the actual inheritance tree. Q object is inherited by Q widget, Q abstract button, and then Q push button. So you have your entire inheritance tree here. It's actually very elegant the way this works. If we expand push button, you can see there's the auto default, default flat. Abstract button has a little bit more and then more and more. So let's go ahead and look at abstract button. You can see this checkable. Now, what does checkable really mean? Notice how I have this property here, checkable selected. I'm going to hit F1 on the keyboard and it takes me right to the help file. This property holds whether the button is checkable. By default, the button is not checkable. Hmm. Thanks, help file. Not very helpful. <laughs> so let's jump back here and let's play around with this and figure out what's going on. So we're going to make that checkable. And we can also say whether or not it is checked. But those are two separate properties. Checkable determines whether or not it could be checked. Checked is whether or not it is checked. So if we set that to check, you notice how graphically it changes on the screen. And unchecked, that's really all it is. It acts like a checkbox on a to-do list. Auto repeat, you notice it's right here. Same thing, we can F1, read the help file if we really wanted to. This is a little more helpful. It actually details out that, hey, when you auto repeat, it will repeat itself every time at an interval. Boy, that's confusing, isn't it? So what does this really do? Really, when you hold the button down, it's just gonna keep firing that signal off over and over again at a set interval. That's really all it does. So. For example, you see there's auto repeat, auto exclusive, auto repeat delay, and interval. So if we say auto repeat and we click and hold that button down, after every 100 milliseconds and after an initial delay of 300 milliseconds, it will fire off that signal that we're holding that button down. 
and then default. Default's a little bit interesting. You see how we have this auto default? And if we look, all of these are auto default. So auto default means the button could automatically become the default. We're going to force this button specifically to be the default. Notice how graphically it's changed a little bit. It might be a little hard to see in this video. Different operating systems are going to handle this differently. For example, on my MacBook Pro, this button now turns bright, bright blue. Windows, it has a slightly different color. And then there's also very flavors of Linux and different desktops and things of that nature. I'm on Linux Mint, so the graphic change is very subtle. But what does this really do here? When you have it as default, if you were to just bring up this, this dialog and let's just run this, and you just press enter on the keyboard, that button is clicked by default. You don't have to do anything. That's typical if you have like an OK or a cancel, you want that to be default. And then we have this little guy here. His sole mission in life is simply going to be to quit the application. These buttons, we're going to toggle and check status. And let's just fire that off right now. So we're going to go in here. We're going to go to slot on each one of these. And I'm going to try and show you how to navigate around the editor a little bit. So I may do things a little differently here. So for example, that one I double clicked. This one I will also double click just to show that you don't have to go all the way down here to the OK. You can just double click. But however, this one, I will actually make sure it's selected and I'll go to OK. So if you see me kind of doing erratic behavior, I'm just showing you different ways of moving around the editor. For example, we can just scroll down or we can actually use this property selector, or I should say this function finder here. And we could say, oh, I want the toggle auto repeat and it takes you right to it. Pretty simple, much more helpful in larger files. This thing pretty much fits on the entire screen. So. Let's jump over to our header and let's add some includes that I know we're going to use. We're going to use the queue message box, a queue string, and let's use queue debug. We're going to put some debug messages out there. Our header file is extremely simple. We're not going to make any other changes. All these slots were automatically generated for us by the editor. And let's just jump right into the code here. Now, when you're first starting off with graphics programming, if you don't have a solid naming convention, it might be a little bit confusing trying to figure out where this goes because you don't have the connect code. So you're trying to figure it out. You can always go right back in here and you can just say, go to slot. It doesn't recreate a function or anything. It just takes you right where you need to go. So it makes it super simple to get there. And here we're just going to say, BTN checkable. And we want the is checked property. There we go. Now we could also start this off by checking that. So we could say UI BTN checkable dot set checked. And notice it takes a Boolean. So we're just going to set that to true. Let's save and run. See what this looks like. Video, maybe I should have used a different operating system, but you can probably see that it graphically looks a little bit different. I can still click on it and it automatically toggles its state. See, true, false, true, false. make that a little more helpful. So checkable comes in handy if you want to have certain properties or you want to fire off some slot or run some function, but you also want to track whether or not the user wants that option enabled. Let's jump back over to our form. Is checked. And it puts us right down here. Is checked is going to be a little bit different. Basically, what we're going to say is, hey, is this thing actually checked? 
So we're going to say QString. So we're going to just simply display a message based on whether or not it's checked. So we're going to display a message box. We're going to use the information. In case you're wondering what that is, there's different flavors of that. You can have questions, critical notifications, warnings, things like that. Information is just, you guessed it, information we're displaying on the screen. It needs a parent. It needs a title. And the actual message. In this case, it's just going to be that Q string that we're going to build right now. Save this, run it, and let's test this out. Yes, it is checked. Click it, you see checked false. No, it is not checked. Click it again, you see it's now checked. Pretty simple, pretty easy to understand. And that way we're not screaming at people. Let's go to our auto repeat and let's go to clicked. And let's just say, hmm, how do I want to do this? Let's go Q info. We're just going to put some info out on the console. And let's go here. Let's toggle this. And let's actually flip this around and we're going to say, hey, do we want to repeat this yes or no? I'm just going to make a value here. We're going to make this the opposite of Auto repeat. There we go. Notice how that's turning a boolean. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So this is the behavior of auto repeat. You hold it down, it's just going to keep printing clicked over and over again. Let's clear that out. Go back here. We're going to toggle that. Now notice I'm holding it down and it only does it when I release. But if I toggle that, Auto repeat will automatically click at a certain interval every time that interval fires off. There's a timer in the background. And when you release the mouse, it stops repeating. Let's actually cue debug some info out here. That way we can get some nice feedback on the screen and we know what we're actually doing. So repeat false, repeat true. Pretty self-explanatory. I think you get it at this point. And let's work with our default here. We're just going to say default button clicked. And let's go ahead and toggle this. And let's actually go up here. Where do I have it? Let's grab this code. Big fan of copy and paste. You'll hear me say that often. I'm a huge fan of the magic of copy and paste. It 
is default. And we're going to grab this. Do a little surgery here. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is that the Qt API is usually very consistent. When you're getting a property, usually it starts with is. For example, is default. But you can see right away, auto repeat doesn't follow that. That's one of the little gotchas here. So um, if you're looking for consistency, 99% of the time it's there, but sometimes it's just not. And then for our quit button, we're just going to simply accept the dialogue and move on in life. Save and run. Now I'm just going to press enter on the keyboard and you can see the default button is clicked. My mouse is way over here. I'm just hitting enter on the keyboard. That's how the default button works. I'm going to clear this out, move back here, and we're going to toggle that default. Now hit enter. You can see how it's still there. And that's because you can tab around. If I move tab over to let's say is checked and hit enter, that's the button it's going to click. Meaning that's now the default because I've tabbed off. Pretty simple, pretty easy to understand. Default's handy when you have things like, let's say you want this quit to be the default. So as soon as this pops up, if they hit enter on the keyboard, it'll quit the application. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a larger project out of Udemy called Cute Widgets for Beginners with C++. This is a large course with 73 lectures and 17 hours of video footage. This course covers everything from what is a widget all the way down to complete example applications using the skills you've learned in this course. Sorry, there's no QML in this course. This is strictly Cute Widgets. I will make a QML course later on, but this just focuses on widgets from a beginner's perspective. Even though this is a beginner's course, you do need to have some fundamental information available. You need to know C++ and the Qt Core Libs. I do have some courses available out on Udemy, Qt Core Beginners, Intermediate Advanced. It's not necessary you take these courses, but it is highly recommended. And as always, I'm available out on the Voidrooms Facebook group, along with 3,000 other programmers. See you there.